there's this energy that's like going just through me, but it's not really part of me, it's just going through me and I'm just channeling it and letting it come out. Then with all the experience and practice I have, I kind of like edge it one way or the other to actually create something that is my illustration. So I'll just sit down and I'll just have fun. I'll just like draw something. Um, and I just, because I like the act of drawing uh, and I love the act of like creating something, especially a story that is personal or that is something that I haven't done before. Although I feel like sometimes I repeat myself a lot in what I draw, but that's because I'm trying to learn as well. The more you draw, the better you're gonna get it. There's no like, you're not gonna go backwards. You're not gonna go, you know, and you're not gonna forget anything. You're just gonna get better. Now, what you do with that drawing is different. If you draw well, it doesn't mean you're gonna be a great illustrator or animator or artist in general. What you need to do with that then is actually like start finding ways of using that skill to say something. And it doesn't have to be something like verbal. It doesn't have to be something like uh, figurative. It could be abstract. It could be whatever you want, but you have to find something to say with that. And that's where your style comes in. Storytelling is absolutely everything. For me, it's like what I experience day to day, I try to relate it through my art. And sometimes the scenes involve me, my wife, and my kid. Um, but sometimes it's totally different people. And sometimes I make up the scenes entirely. But the emotions that are in there are actually emotions I have at one point in my life uh, felt. And I'm trying to recreate them for myself as well as for others. Like for one thing, it's like it's, I remember those emotions. And if you put them on paper, I relive them. And that's an amazing feeling. Everybody's drawings inspire me. Even the artists are not considered to be good artists, even simple art, because there's something in everything. It's not about how well you draw, it's what you say with your art. So someone who actually doesn't master the art of drawing, the way Academy wants you to master it, who can't draw like a human figure, but draw stick figures, if they can tell a story through it, if they can make me feel something, I will absolutely adore those drawings. On the other hand, I have seen so many great artists or great draftsmen whose art leaves me completely cold that it's, it's really all about the emotion I find in something. There's a skill, and there's how you use your skill. The pitfalls of like uh, staring out in art. Your, your image is not done when you're done drawing it. Your image is done when people see it, when people are able to like enjoy it. Otherwise, it doesn't exist, basically. It exists only for you. It's only a step further than like it exists in my head. And a lot of students do that. A lot of students like draw in their sketchbooks and they develop those amazing skills. And some of them are like phenomenal storytellers, but they put them in their sketchbooks and they don't necessarily show them to anybody. No one really knows what they are, how good they, they can be because they don't do those extra steps that are part of the creative process. There's probably like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of images out there that people will never see because they're in like sketchbooks and loose pieces of paper or people are afraid of showing them. Fear, the fear of sharing something because you feel like you're not good enough. The art is being broken down to the actual message, nothing else. Sometimes your client is gonna love your worst piece of art only because it delivers the message much, much, much better than any of the more beautiful pieces of art. You'll get criticized on art, not on the personal level, but like on the marketing level and the branding level. And you realize that people are not seeing what you see in art. They see something totally different. And it helps you take a distance from it and like look at it in different eyes where like, does it get a message across? If yes, great, then it works. If it's beautiful, it doesn't get a message across, it doesn't work. If they understand the image, they already have a connection with it. It doesn't really matter how well it's drawn or not. It matters how the connection works. Once I realized that, it made it so much easier to show my work and actually to do a whole lot more work um, because I was not focused on the same things. I wasn't being afraid of showing myself because I was actually telling stories and I was trying to control the stories. The better I got at it, the, better, the deeper the stories got. I went from like drawing little cutesy animals to the from rough sketches to something more personal about like, you know, love and relationships. And I get inspired a lot by stuff that are not art related, not like uh, painting or digital illustration. Music is one, uh, my family is another, uh, my wife, my kid, um, you know, San Francisco. 
um, meeting people in general or observing people that really inspires me. It's like, it's like a superpower. The ability to draw is like a power. You could draw whatever you wanted to draw. If you wanted to draw a super strong guy, if you wanted to draw like a really cute woman, if you wanted to draw a scene, a space, and make it look like it really existed, it would be like super, super cool. So that's something that inspired me. And the fact that you could actually like tell stories and make someone dream, literally dream. You know, like when you're a kid and you're reading those graphic novels, you're really thinking, you're like on this like safari somewhere with this hero or you're, or you're gonna save the world or you know, that something is happening. And I always thought it was a superpower. Uh, and I really wanted to master that in order to be able to tell stories. I still feel like I have a lot to learn. I think I'm at a point where I can basically tell stories and create emotions through drawing. And that is a superpower I feel. And so I use it as much as I can because I'm just like, you know, I get high on it. I'm just like, oh my God, I can, I can do this. Or actually, I think I can't do it, then I try to do it, and I end up doing something. Even if it's not exactly what I had in mind, it's something, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And then I'm like, well, I need to like work harder to do it better, but I guess all artists do that. Whatever happens between my daughter and myself are actions, and through those actions, there are emotions. And those emotions tell a story. Um, the story of like, that's how you remember things. And that's why I try to capture, because it touches me so much, you know, it's a, uh, when my daughter comes up to me and like grabs my finger to pull me to go get a cookie and she just points the box to this cookie, it just makes me burst out laughing with that sort of like really deep laugh. And it's like, it's a beautiful emotion and I wish I could capture that. Have people see and experience that as well. Not that I want them to experience my experiences, but I want them to be able to see the small things and really enjoy it. Um, it doesn't have to be the big things in life. It's all about the small things. I'll base it off something that happened to myself or my wife, or I'll see something, I'll try to find a staging that will create that emotion. It's all about the storytelling, the art of storytelling. Last week I went to get a haircut, and as I was leaving the place, uh, it was 10 o'clock in the morning, 10.30, and the light was pouring through the window. And it was that type of light that when you sit in it and you're behind the window, you just want to fall asleep because it's so beautiful. And I just was like, wow, this is beautiful. I want to tell stories and I want, to, I want people to experience emotions. I just have to listen to my emotions a little bit and go with them.